Hello guys, nice to meet you. My name is Nizar. I'm from Marrakech, Morocco, and I'm very happy and humbled to be with you here at uh, NFC. I want to start by thanking the technical guys who are doing amazing since yesterday. They didn't stop working. Thanking the team of NFC Lisbon who is doing an amazing job. Uh, I've been doing most of the talks in the world and I can tell you that this is one of the best that I have seen in terms of crowd. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, we will be talking today about utility, about if it's a trap, if it's a scam, uh, what does it involve, how does it impact art, how does it impact collectibles, and we will be having with us Zeneca, Coinbilly, and Sky Golpe. And maybe Orlando is going to join us, but uh, I know he has a boot, so maybe he, he, it's going to be difficult for him. But the good news is because he's not here, so maybe we will be able to grab two of you with us on stage. So if you don't know how it works, it works like that. We will be sitting, so guys, just go for it. Um, yeah, just don't, don't die now, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, just feel free where, where, where the energy flows. Yeah, 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 go, go. Yeah. yeah, of course, you can take it. No, you keep two because sometimes I, I might grab two people. So um, the main idea is we will challenge you on some questions, asking if you like, don't like, agree or don't agree. And I'll grab someone who wants to come and talk and we, we're gonna be challenging you this way. There is a Discord, you gotta take the QR code that is supposed to be there. And then you can ask questions. I will be looking at the questions, but also our guests are be looking at the questions as well. So the first thing that I want to know is if you were to rate yourself on the NFT space from one to 10 um, and say one to five is that you feel you are a newbie and five to 10 you are a good, like someone who knows. So one to five is red and five to 10 is green. How do you rate yourself please? So that just we know. Okay. Okay. So we can't bullshit you, huh? right? Okay. <laughs> Fuck, it's, it's, yeah. All experts. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the main idea is to challenge you and start with you being challenged right now. Who thinks utility is the backbone of a, an organized scam? If you agree, green. If you don't, red. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you challenge me, I challenge you. Is, okay. is utility a Good. scam? So you think it's a an organized scam. Come here. Come here. Come. Here. Come. 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 You motherfucker, come. 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 You're welcome. So, Orlando is not here, but you're going to be seated with us somehow. So, we'll start with Zeneca first. Is it working? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be working. Yeah, you, you'll have your time to talk. <laughs> so, Zeneca, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you love about the space, and, and then... Yeah, I mean, so much there. I'll try and keep it brief. So, I'm Zeneca. I've been in uh, this space for about two years. Early 2021, I got in. Before that, I was a professional poker player. That was my background. Um, I... What am I? What do I do? <laughs> you were a professional poker player. I was, yeah. But like in this space, I guess I'm a content creator. I have my own company, community, Zen Academy. So we really focus on creating educational content about NFTs, crypto, Web3, blockchain, all of that. And it's evolved a lot over the last two years. I mean, 2021 was a, a lifetime ago. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of me in a nutshell. And uh, I'll pass it on. It became somehow normal to say what we do and the way we do things uh, as if it was normal. But you were a professional poker player, <laughs> then an artist. Everyone always gets stuck up on this. <laughs> talking on stage. I mean, this, guys, we're doing something extraordinary in this space, and we have to be always aware of that. This is not normal. I mean, when I, when I meet people around the world, they say, what do you do? I like, I try. But no, what's your job? I, I try. Because that's what we're doing. We're trying a few different things, and that makes this space very spicy. Coin Billy, please, who are you, what you do, and what Coin you Coin Billy, um, I am part of the Random Character Collective team. We launched Invisible Friends, Slim Hoods, Mood Rollers, Kit Friends, a bunch of other collections. We help artists grow their communities, and uh, yeah, I do all the things for marketing, community management, partnerships, and yeah, that's, that's what I'm about. Yeah, and, and you say it like that, you know, we help cookouts, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> Sky Golpe. Hi everyone, this is Sky Golpe. Yeah, not Sky Golpe. He was like, yeah, exactly. hey, please, it's Sky Golpe. Look at that. Because the American way generally is Sky Golpe, <laughs> which is kind of oh, cool, but that's not my name. So. <laughs> Uh, so Sky Gulp here, I'm an artist uh, that works with uh, several medium, uh, digital art, physical art, installations, photography. And I found myself minting my first token in early 2020. And NFTs completely changed my life in a way, because that's where I managed to create a very strong market around my works and it's an extremely exciting journey because it's so merged with technological innovation that the pace that everything is moving is very challenging. Uh, yeah, so I guess pretty much that's I, my I, intro. I'm curious about one thing. If, if the market dies, okay? Yeah. Which will not happen, but well, it imagine, is. <laughs> how would you feel? Like, because it says you changed my life. Would you feel like lost or would you feel empowered because well, I guess that what happened to me was in a way so extraordinary and uh, amazing that I could never be upset or, you know, and, you know, being an artist, to be honest, as long as I would manage to preserve my creative process and my way of being an artist, I wouldn't really, you know, be that upset, I guess. But if you ask me, I don't see digital art going anywhere. Because, you know, there is also a big distinction between NFT, which is a technology at the end of the day, and the digital art and the digital market, the, the digital art market that it is now shaping up. And that's about to become a, a crazy industry. So on you the really top see it as, as two different things. So for you, it's two different well, things. Well, I mean, what, is, what, what I believe is that is thanks to NFT that the for the first time in history, a digital art market was created because for the first time in history, a digital content or a digital piece of art could be authenticated. So this simply before wasn't existing, it didn't exist. So I guess this is the, the reason why uh, it was such a good use case for NFT to be attached to digital art, but as you probably all know, digital art is simply one of the many use cases okay. that the NFT technology can actually okay. offer to many, several markets and industries. I don't agree, but that's a point. That's a good point. Well, I'll, why? I'll, I'll you tell don't you think so? I'll tell you why. Yeah, please. Yeah, we'll have on. time. <laughs> ah, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought well, that was a debate. No, no, I'm, 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 coming, I'm coming to you. <laughs> coming after you. You, you should yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah, to please, yeah, please. Who are you? What GM, you? everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. GM, GM. My name is Victor. I'm just someone you know uh, on all the social media and founder of Stone Tigers, currently building something special for you. Uh, that's a little bit about me. I joined NFTs uh, in August 2021, and since then, been uh, helping a lot of artists to achieve success and growing our community, providing fun activities and cool prizes. Uh, for people that love to buy and play games. Amazing, so this is your project, right? Yes. So this is utility. Yeah, indeed. And you, you still think it's an organized scam? <laughs> Please. This is actually an interesting Please. question. Yeah. Let us know, so we're here for you. <laughs> the, the thing that I wanted to say is that very often the utility causing more trouble um, rather than being very useful because not all communities need it. So if I would ask you what the utility in Akamigos has other than just being a cool PFP and IP rights, like, do they need any? Do they need to develop the game? If they would say that they're developing a game, would it be a uh, higher probability of it being scammed? Because there is actually promises that have to be fulfilled. So that's why 99% of the projects are actually dropping off, as they don't fulfill the promises that they think they're going to be able to execute. So, so that's why. But, but that's, that's a picture of the present. Of, from yeah. your point of view, you, you look at the present and you say, because it's like that, then it's a scam. But the fact that utility brings some sort of value the fact that it's misused might not necessarily make it a scam. So yes. it's just that we're misusing a good idea or a good way to do something. Like a knife can be used to cut meat or to stab someone. You're saying like we're stabbing everybody. Yeah, I think we're just stabbing on too early stage uh, rather than 
led it to be developed organically out of the wants and needs of the community formed together with the founders once the visions aligns because that would produce the stronger uh, floor prices and the stro stronger community going further okay. and pushing the project as well since they feel that they are a part of it they took their part in decision making that's why it's important firstly rather than just pointing with a finger and saying we're gonna do xyz if you got a community going, then just ask them what they would want to see. You may get a thousand opinions that will be better than yours. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll ask you to leave because, uh, because before that, before that, I'll ask you who agree with him. Green, who does not? Red. Be, uh, I'm not going to ask anyone to come on stage. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, okay. It's, it's half half. It's 50-50. Okay, so you did a good job. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank you, lot. everybody. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful my, time. Thank you. Thanks. My, my next question goes to you guys. So do you think the focus on utility in projects impact their long-term value as collectibles? And I'll start with Veneka. Yeah, I think, especially for collectibles, utility is a trap. Like, the more utility there is, the less value there is as a collectible. And I think of it as, like... Go deeper into this one. Yeah, please. like... Are there um, external, um, what's the word? It's like it, external dependencies. The more external dependencies there are, the less likely it is that the NFT, the token, will have long-term collectible value. So if you think of uh, Bored Apes versus Punks, you know, classic example. Punks, no utility. They exist. The, no one is asking when airdrop, when staking, when party. It's just there were the, f the first 10K PFP collection, a community formed around it, there were an art project, and people own them because they want a piece of history, of culture, of collecting this thing. And they, no one has to do anything, really, for value to stay. Execu execution risk. Execution risk, exactly. Whereas you, uh, with Bored Apes now, if all of a sudden, there was never anything done for the board apes. The, the roadmap doesn't exist, the metaverse, the, the gaming, the floor price would tank. And so they have all these external dependencies. So I think purely from a collectible point of view, and you look at this with like art, like autoglyphs or some of the earliest generative art or one of one art, uh, adding utility to it is a risk, execution risk. Yeah, but the fact that it's a risk is, is not a bad thing. It, as long as no, not at all. Like, Bored Apes are obviously doing fine. It's just, as a collectible, like, if I were to buy something and be like, I think this is going to be valuable 50 years from now, 100 years from now, I'm way more likely to choose a punk than a Bored Ape, just because a Bored Ape's value depends, at this point, on the team continuing to deliver. And especially if you look at, like, an even more recent project where they're promising all this kind of stuff, there's all these possibilities to fail. Or if I were to go and buy... Uh, I'll take an even better example, um, an autoglyph, on, the first on-chain generative art. It's like, I think that will survive forever as long as the Ethereum blockchain survives. So you, I don't need anything to happen. There's n basically no risk, and it's very likely to do well long-term, whereas other things have increased risk, which can potentially lead to higher upsides, but, you know. I think a, a good reason for that is utility and promises bring in certain type of collectors, you can say while no promises and just buying something for collecting, there's no expectations. So it's, it's a different type of collector, different type of holder base, right? Yeah, I, I would agree with you 100% if I didn't have the Sartoshi thing cool. in mind. Sartoshi, oh, okay. for Emphers, the promise was nothing but motherfuckers in your wallet. Yeah. But then when he left the space, everyone was like, oh, but he left, so what's next? But at first, I just gave you something that's it's a meme, and I promised nothing, but when I close my Twitter account, there's what's next. So maybe utility became another piece of art, and not necessarily just merchandising yeah. or the access of something. So the expectation is always here yeah. for, for, from the point of view of... So that is why I'm, I'm, I'm putting some kind of colors in yeah. here, saying people will always expect something from you. So either you give something valuable to them, yep. uh, which is because we were asking here, what is utility from Rune to back? And I think it's really cool because yeah, if you don't explain to people what is utility, then there is no subject. But utility is basically how you can utilize what I gave you. So 
the NFT became, becomes like a vessel to, to enter some sort of space to receive different kind of things and different kind of experiences. That, that would be my defining of utility. Do you guys have another way to define it? Maybe Sky Goto, you have another way to say it. Uh, yeah, but I think you're right in a way because if you think about it, NFT is a utility. Because, you know, now all of a sudden, so let's, 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 let's take my, my field, so it's more, a little bit more related to art. So now a collector not only owns a piece of art, but this piece of art is automatically as in the form of a digital token, which is your digital wallet. wallet. So in a way, it is a basic uh, idea of utility, which is intrinsic in the technology itself. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot so it extract would be like, one from the another. You cannot yeah, extract them. So it would be like, I don't know, if you have to run a marathon and you have the car and, and you just decide to, I don't know, to walk. So I guess in what you were trying to say is that this, this ecosystem, it is already shaped up and built in a way where tokens will sort of lead to something because tokens are transferable, they travel in the blockchain, you know, they are attached to your digital identity, which is another very important factor. So I guess, yeah, it would be a little bit too simplistic yeah, to just say that utility is not that. Having said so, I never ever like the word utility. Yeah, because like, it becomes, I hate you know, it. here's the problem. <laughs> because it's so transactional. You, you, you know, you, sorry, just to let you go, just one thing is I, I came up with this, while I was brainstorming for, for this panel, actually, just, just trying to put thoughts, I, I thought, how cool it would be if we would replace it with usefulness? Do you want my you know? opinion? I'll tell you, if you use another word, it will become trendy and you will start to hate it. Yeah, never That's mind. exactly the way it but works. What I'm saying is just that I guess there is the reason also why the word utility is so hated, because there is this uh, transactional uh, flavor attached to it, which makes it especially for you know people that also are in the art side of the NFTs, who kind of feel it a little bit like um, not so pertinent I somehow, mean, this, understand? The, 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 so what you're saying here is very pertinent, very, very pertinent because it takes me to the other question. You have to know that these questions were designed by us. So uh, the way it works, NFC Lisbon decides that a emperor is going to be the moderator and then we decide to discuss this. So we had the discussion and designed this question. And the next question is, are NFTs primarily serving as a mean of expression and creativity, or are they primarily viewed as an investment uh, tool with utility features? So that means, are you buying something that you wanna flip anyways, or are you buying something that you wanna hold that gives you something back? And I'll, I'll go with you, Coinbilly, maybe to start with this one. So I would say in the current market, it, people are buying as an investment. You know, people are people are asking you like, what should I buy next? What can I sell for more next? I don't think that's gonna last for so long personally. I think in the future, it's gonna be more about digital collectability rather than, you know, using digital collectability as an investment. You know, it, it's gonna be more like, you're gonna be consuming digital assets versus collecting. I mean, it's collecting and consuming, but you're gonna be constantly buying them and building a collection without the purpose of reselling it. That's how I think it is right now. It is you're buying it to reselling, but. The Usenica, for example, as a former poker player, do you think we can close the casino? Because I believe when people get addicted to something, you, you, you cannot close it. That, that, that's my belief. And you, because of being a poker player, and having this knowledge. Yeah, uh, so this space is, the amount of, in terms of volume, I think the majority of the volume is people gambling. In terms of individual humans, I'm less certain. I think there's far more collectors and, and appreciators and artists and creators, but the vast majority of the volume is speculators, and that's the case. And you're right, you can't stop people gambling. It was, uh, you know, it was ICO phase in 2017, it, it was DeFi summer and all the random coins, and then it was NFTs, uh, meme coins, ordinals, even before crypto, penny stocks, people, sports betting, people 
human nature is to gamble for better or worse. And, and, and some people are drawn to that, some people are not. And that's one of the biggest issues stopping us from going mainstream is that there's so much gambling in the space. Most people don't want to buy an asset that then drops 50% in price. Most people want to buy something and then know that that's what it's worth and that they've got value out of it. So I, I, I think that where we are right now is still, in terms of volume, largely gambling and it's, it's not great, but it's not gonna be like this forever. It's like every year that goes by, there is increased regulation. And like regulation is like, people sometimes think of it as a bad word, but regulation is good. We need regulation. We need to like have rules and restrictions for companies and individuals and marketplaces and, and everyone to you know, regulate this space so that scammers and rug pullers aren't left, right and center taking retail or casual participants' monies. It's just, it's gonna take a while and we want sensible regulation, not over-regulation. But I don't well, know if that answered the question. But you know what, no, you did. What, what's amazing here is that in my opinion, we created an asset that is tradable and is subjective. When you're trading on sport, there is some kind, some kind of lecture of this team is better, this team is not better, they're gonna play, they're gonna be a winner. If you play poker, there's some, time, some, some sort of um, design thinking of how do I play a hand, uh, reading my, 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 my co-players or, but here we're speculating on subjectivity. I like, I don't like. But if you add utility to that, then you add some sort of metrics to measure a project. So maybe utility is a way to protect from craziness of subjectivity in certain kind of way. No, I mean, that's, that's absolutely correct. It's, if you have a project that tells you, Metabrew Society, really great example. They're a, a company, they, they sell an NFT every year. If you have the, the NFT, you can redeem it for like 240 cans of beer. It's like real utility. And what, what it means is that the price of the NFT, the token, is kind of like pegged to the value of beer and what people think. And so the price doesn't go up and down, it just kind of stays relatively stable. And that's great. That is what we should hope for. The problem is 99% of people want to buy something that goes up. And so when a team tells you exactly what they're going to do, it reduces the possibility for speculation. And generally, the floor price goes down because they're not sending you 240 cans of beer a year. That they're, they're telling you there's like all this utility that they make up that's actually not valuable to people. So yeah, there's a big difference between promises of utility and then actual utility. Delivering, yeah, it's yeah like, like promising utility that will drive up prices. Like promising you're gonna airdrop a coin. Like the other day there was a mint on OpenSea and it, it sat for like an hour and then they tweet out their name with a money sign be behind it. It mints out and it pumps like 10x just because they put out like that they're gonna drop a coin. Like no one wanted it and then all of a sudden they're dropping a coin. There's no reason for someone to want that coin. Yeah, but it's an opportunity, an opportunity to it's flip. It's an opportunity to, but like there's no reason for someone to want that, but because they're promising that something's going to happen, like there, people are gonna flock to it. And then once that happens, there's no way it's gonna, you know, last. There's no way like it's gonna sustain that because no one wanted it before. What's them to want it after? You know? Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Let us challenge the public for for now on, on a question: uh, Are utility and art not compatible? I, I I absolutely don't have the answer to be really honest, and I challenged myself a lot yesterday before I slept. So, uh, do you, do you think utility and art are not compatible? Yes, I agree. Green? No, I don't agree. Uh, red. So is Green saying that utility and art are compatible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I lost myself <laughs> here. I know. I, I, I challenge yeah, I myself too much. The, that's are, the right answer. I guess. Yeah, right here. <laughs> both, both yeah. Side. No, are utility and art not compatible? Yes, I agree. Green? No, I don't agree. Red. So basically, is art utility? <laughs> I have no idea what is, I'm is saying. Is art utility? I, green, art is yes. the utility. I, green, yes. Red, no. Yeah, I think the, the, the way it's formulated, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. It's confusing. Yeah, because I'm French speaking, you know, and I try to speak English for like two weeks and it's very hard for me. So I, come on stage. <laughs> you, with the sunglasses. Art is. <laughs> come with us. Uh, please, can you tell us who you are, what you do? and how you understood the bad question that I just asked. <laughs> so, uh, my name's Martin. Uh, I'm actually a DeFi dev, but have an interest in like NFTs and uh, in the space and what's going on around it. Um, I'm gonna answer the question. So, the question, the question I'm gonna answer is, is 
art and NFTs, sorry, no, is utility and NFTs compatible, right? And I guess the way I think about it is, you've got, so many NFT projects kind of look at NFTs as a way, to, so look, look at utility as a way to grow the project, right? You know, a game, a, a, a toy, whatever it is, like anything they can think of to try and create almost a world around their NFT project. And that's okay, but the question you need to ask is, does the utility serve the art? Uh, if it doesn't serve the art, it, all of a sudden the art becomes inauthentic. It, it, and people can feel that as well. They can feel, oh, this, this isn't a real, a true expression of art. This is, there's something behind that, right? As opposed to when you look at a utility and it's like, wow, this is, it, it complements what you have. It's almost, I'm trying to think of a good example, but I mean, I think, I think the biggest example is like maybe your iPhone, for example, right? It's art, because there's designers that love designing the iPhone and their apps, but also it's a utility, we use it every single day. So that's my take on it. But is art utility? Like if, if an NFT project just launches- He's gonna challenge you like me. <laughs> if an NFT project launches and says, this is an art collection, right? Is that utility to collect it? So th there is a meta, a meta like, play, which is to say that like all art is utility, right? Because everyone, you know, you buy art to be able to express it and, and, and enjoy it. But at, at the end of the day, it's um, art, like the difference between art with utility and art that has no utility is that like the art that has no, no utility, quote unquote, which I, which I do believe the art does have no, no utility, it's, that it's purely for the expression, the emotional expression of the art itself and nothing else. That's lit, that it is culture, as opposed to art with, art with utility, where it's more than that. That's my take on it. Yeah, I agree, and I... Thank you so much. I personally think that if we analyze is it on a sort of conceptual way, art can definitely not be utility, in my opinion, because it's meant to be the opposite of utility. And at least as from my personal point of view, I can generally recognize art when there is not a useful meaning to it somehow. That's when I really feel art, because I don't have to understand. I feel it. And so if you see it in this way, I think that we are talking almost about a paradox somehow of the terminology. But if we start to talk about the art market, that's when things definitely start to differ. But also I want to say, because you are a developer, so you touch on a very good point, utility can also mean to contribute to the piece of art itself in its creation, because uh, it's a very, I don't know, not, maybe not so clever, but very fun example was when Damien Hirst entered the space and he just decided to basically you, you could buy the NFT and then till a burn certain it. point, you could decide to burn it and then get through a physical performance in a gallery in London, which was very cool. So if we want to put under utility these sort of initiatives, then also utility can very be much complemented to us. So you say- If we are talking to sort of pure level, but then when we start to interact with the market, I think the utility, as you were saying too, can really serve many dynamics, many possibilities, and many opportunities for viewers and for artists. But it, it, would, it would still be art for you? Like, it's just, it's like- If it's you like, look at Tom Sachs, for like example. It's like analyzing things on two, two different um, points of view, okay? Because when you talk about things like, I don't know, art, God, uh, you know, all these absolute concepts, it can never be so uh, extreme into the definition of the meaning because oh, at least for me like I chose to be an artist because subjectiveness is the what I use to define reality okay. so that you know I hope that answers the question no, because it's, it's like it's, it's like saying I don't know bread or butter type of thing you know it's like of course if you're on diet yeah probably you go with bread but I guess these are so unique and subjective concept to people that is really hard to, to, to categorize in, in this heavy, you know, kind of spectrum 
in my it, opinion. It, it not only answers the question, but it raises another question. For sure. Which is, because you say, you say people, people are buying art, we talk about community, we talk about us, we talk about this space. But that notion of utility, isn't it like the tool that keeps the people involved in what you're doing? Because, because there is an expectation, there is like a dynamic created between the artist and the crowd which challenges the artist to go out of what he knows and create something that is bigger than him with people, meaning it might change the way we're doing art. It might be something that we do together. And there is an amazing project that I've been introduced to. I don't know if you guys know about it. It's called ADA.art. They will be talking at 540. It's absolutely fantastic. They started like five or six years ago and it's an ongoing fresque that you, that you start painting yourself and you, you sleep and someone continues with your line and then you go and someone else continues and it's a piece of art that is made by us, for us, with us. So this is where maybe it might be going. So my question to you guys is, does utility keep the crowd interested and involved or once again, it's just like a scam? If you agree, green. If you don't, red. No. Yeah, green, it keeps involved, yeah. Red, not really. Oh. We have two reds, so I'd like you, miss. We have three reds. You know what? You, you, and you. Come. So I actually, I see a question on here that I'd like to answer. Um, and then, and then people. It says if we look at RCC, what, what I'm a part of, Invisible Friends is the one with the more utilities, you would say. So do I think if that is the one with the highest floor, which is like the most hype? Um, and I guess to answer that, I also want to say what RCC is all about. RCC is about, we, we never really promised anything more than the art, more than the animation but we did promise that collectors of our previous collections get access to the future collections, which I guess you can call that utility. You know, collectors get to collect more. Um, Invisible Friends was a special case because it launched during a special time and it had the most attention. And I think NFTs in the current state is a game of attention. Um, so that attention let us, you know, get collaborations like Kith, you know, launch, you know, get sponsors like Shopify and Snapchat for events and stuff like that. So I think that attention that Invisible Friends had, definitely, I would say that is one of the main reasons Invisible Friends is the highest floor. I guess it's, it's you know, the one with the most hype because of that attention. I wouldn't say it has the more, most utility, um, but I would say it has the most attention, so. Okay, so, but floor matters. Would you say that the floor is the right metrics? So personally, I don't, I don't put floor and success on the same metric. Like when I look at something, I, I like look at what they're offering and what it would do for me. Um, but I do know 99% of people do, you know, put floor and, and success on the same page. I, so. I think it's gonna change. I think th this main idea of floor is, is might be changing, but, yeah. but that's the mechanic that OpenSea put in the market. This is, this, and they gave us the tool to become stupid. Yep. That, I, that's, that's what I believe. Uh, so yeah, yeah, guys, I'm very happy to have you with us. So I'll, I'll take one mic more. I'd like you to introduce yourself one after the other. I know you cannot stand, so that's right. Maybe you can come here because there is a camera, so at least we can see you as well. So who are you, what you do, and then you tell us why uh, you think uh, utility is not keeping people involved. Hello, uh, so I'm Chewy. Um, I'm a gal thing, so LinksDAO is like, if you're talking about utility, they, they provide the most utility, I would say, if you like golf. And I don't think floor price really reflects that, which is very cool to see. Like that's, that's sort of what I was saying, where I don't think floor price and success really uh, you know, go hand in hand, but that's probably one of my favorite projects right now. Favorite artist, um, again, I, I won't say uh, one of the ones we've helped launch, but I, I'll say maybe DK, DK Motions, great animator. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. So as NFT project, art project, I, I must go with uh, Matt Kane project, Gazers. I guess that's the, the correct name. Yeah. Great. 
Yeah, that Uplux. Was, yeah, that's, that's really like one of, and then it was so early when really like utility, but also coding and, ge and generative art was not so relevant as it is now. So for all these reasons and on the top of the incredible aesthetic, and it's, an, it's a dynamic project as well. So it changed on the Bitcoin quotation. So it was like a very early project and Trilogy and very, very great. And as artists, I mean, there are so many talent, you know, in the space. You have to say one. Uh, you have yeah, to I'd, I'd go with my brother, Jesse Draxler. This is really cool. Uh, Armin? Um, I just like following what I was saying, I would mention the name of an uh, artist that managed to do what I was explaining, a uh, contemporary artist based in Milan, Italy. His name is Bobby Away. Okay. That's like, I love that guy. Perfect. I'm not going to play the game so that I, you know, nobody's angry. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much.